We're asked to write the fraction in lowest terms and express the answer as an improper fraction. So even though this question does ask for the answer as an improper fraction, we'll also review how to write an improper fraction as a mixed number. A fraction is written in lowest terms or simplified when the only common factor between the numerator and denominator is one. So the given fraction is not in lowest terms or simplified because 64 and 56 do share a common factor other than one. If we're able to identify the greatest common factor between 64 and 56, then we can create an equivalent fraction by dividing both the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor, and in one step, we'll have the given fraction in lowest terms. But let's just say we don't recognize the greatest common factor, but because both 64 and 56 are even, we do notice they have a common factor of two. Let's begin by dividing the numerator and denominator by two. 64 divided by two equals 32. 56 divided by two is equal to 28. And now that's how we recognize that 32 and 28 share a common factor of four. So now let's divide the numerator and denominator by four. And 32 divided by four is equal to eight. And 28 divided by four is equal to seven. Notice now the only common factor between eight and seven is one. And therefore, we do have the fraction in lowest terms or the fraction is now simplified. Because 64 and 56 were divisible by two and four, the greatest common factor of 64 and 56 is eight. So we could have also simplified the given fraction in one step by dividing both the numerator and denominator by eight. 64 divided by eight is eight. 56 divided by eight is seven. Now if we have a difficult time determining common factors, or the greatest common factor, we can also simplify the fraction using the prime factorization of 64 and 56. Let's also show this method. Using this method, the first step is to determine the prime factorization of 64 and 56. Well, 64 is equal to eight times eight, and eight is equal to four times two, where two is prime. And of course, four is equal to two times two. So the prime factorization of 64 is six factors of two. And now we'll find the prime factorization of 56. 56 equals two times 28, two is prime. 28 equals four times seven, seven is prime and four equals two times two. So the prime factorization of 56 is three factors of two and a factor of seven. While it does take some work to find the prime factorization, the nice thing about this method is that we see all the common prime factors. Notice 64 and 56 share three factors of two in common and because two over two is equal to two halves, or two divided by two, which equals one. Two over two simplifies to one over one here, here, and here. The remaining factors give us the fraction in lowest terms. Notice the numerator is now two times two times two, which equals eight, and the denominator is just seven. So there are several methods to simplify a fraction, you should use the method that works best for you. So we are done with this question, but let's also review how we write eight-sevenths as a mixed number. Eight-sevenths is an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than or equal to the denominator. And the steps to write an improper fraction as a mixed number are shown here. The main thing to remember is that a fraction bar means division. So the fraction of eight-sevenths is equal to eight divided by seven, so if we divide, notice how there's one, seven, and eight. One times seven is seven, we subtract. Eight minus seven is equal to one. So this division problem tells us eight sevenths is equal to one whole from the quotient, and the fraction part is the remainder of one over the divisor, which is also the original denominator. So eight sevenths equals one and one seventh. I hope you found this helpful.